What's up, Fit Fam? My name is Sully Lukey, and this is... I'm Derek White. And this is Guys With Thighs. Damn right. Showing, hey, showing them off today. We got, we got a couple of reviews said that, uh, hey, if you're going to do Guys With Thighs, you have to show off your thighs. Yeah, So fair. It's we true. moved locations. I, I should have gotten, like, a quad pump before this. I mean, you should have did legs. It I is Friday. Legs. What are you doing? I do legs on... I usually like to do legs on Monday. Why is that? So, I, I like to train on Sundays. Yep. Just kind of nice. Not a lot of people are in there. I agree. My time to kind of relax, get away from everything. So I, I, my muscle group I'm hitting first in the week is chest right now, chest and arms, because that's what I'm trying to grow the most. So I want to have that the day after my rest day when my body's most primed to be able to you know, perform well. So chest and shoulders are, or chest and arms are, is first, and then I do legs next because I like hitting legs. And then it gives me another day in between when I'm going to hit chest and well, chest again. So my split's a little funky right now. Not funky. It, it makes sense. But to most people, they'd be like, well, why are you doing it like that? And I could absolutely explain it. But I had to explain it in my DMZ the other day to somebody. And Well, let's cool. just go to this. Um, shameless plug. Go to Family Matters, episode one, and you can see why Derek is... Why I'm programming the yes, way I so am. Why, why you're programming the way you are. Because... You are specifically trying to grow your upper body at yep. the moment, right? Try, specifically try your chest. Chest and arms right now. Yeah. My weak points. And, and we go into that a little bit in Family Matters. And if you want to find out why he's training this way, go watch that, quite yeah, frankly. check it out. Yeah. It was a good episode, too. It was a good episode. It was my first one. Yeah, my first podcast, one. December 1st, I was just like, fuck it. It was fun, too. It you was. there, sent it. It was a good time. <laughs> it was a little crooked. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It, if anybody uh, watching at home is trying to figure out Family Matters, the first thing that our boss at the time, Chase, said to us, he's just like, dude, the first thing I noticed, man, was the fucking camera was crooked. I bet you there's probably a few people that are watching this now that <laughs> yeah. are going to be like, dude, I, I didn't watch it. I was listening to it on like, YouTube Premium or whatever. They're going to go back and look at and it. And they're going to, yeah. And say, oh, yeah. dude, it is crooked. Yeah, yeah. One side's a little higher than the other. Oh, well. You know. Life goes on. the reason... I kind of just wanted to send it that day was because this is something I wanted to do all of 2023 and I've just been like, ah, the time is not right. Or I actually had a podcast with my pastor and I stopped doing it. Got busy slash got kind of knocked down. One of the episodes didn't get recorded. Hey, still doing that, huh? There we go. I know. Um, for some of you that don't know, this is our take three. Take three. <laughs> for episode three, right? I, I had a yeah. little bit of a rant on the last one. Yeah, so we had a little rant time. on the last one. Ran out of storage on the first one. So here we are, take three. And That's one. Third time's the charm. It is the third time's the charm, and here we are. Um, we're caffeinated. Episode. We're dominating. And we're winning. Winning matters. Let's um, let's get into that. So, this episode drops on Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all. Big day. Feliz Navidad. What's that? I said Merry Christmas, Soleil. Ah, oh, thank you. Merry of course, Christmas. thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, my man, <laughs> my man. Um, but let's talk about starting again, right? Mm, yeah, because sure. we're celebrating Jesus Christ. That's this is the day we celebrate his birthday. Nobody really knows when his birthday was. But this is the day we decide, the church decided to celebrate. Yes. Right? Yes. And um, I believe when I look at him, it's all about starting again, getting a new life. Like, not free of sin because we are all sinners. But being able to walk into the pearly gates, as one say, because he died for us on the cross. Um, and it just makes me reflect on starting again, being able to go again like i'm gonna say that again (laughs) i'm struggling at the moment help oh like you want me to go yes so (laughs) i'll say this when i think about christmas right now for us it's like because it's you know the week before christmas right now it's still the advent season so if you're you know christian or if you're not i'll give you a little bit of an education advent is the time it's kind of like a waiting period where you're waiting for like the birth of christ for christmas but I, I, you know, for me, when I'm thinking of a waiting period, it's more of a preparation period. You know? Does that make sense? Keep talking. So, I, instead of waiting, sitting around, not doing anything, just kind of expecting this outcome. You know, obviously, Christmas is going to come no matter what. Right? That, that's just a, the inevitable. But how can I celebrate Christ in that time while I'm waiting for him? How can I be better prepared for when he does come? And obviously, this is more on the 
not the Christ probably is not going to come today on Christmas Day. In in actuality, he might. We don't know. But how can I, you know, se- se- celebrate him? Sorry, I'm looking for wood to knock on. Oh, no, you're fine. Yeah, <laughs> this is good. All of a sudden, we just get raptured in the middle of the podcast. Yeah, shit. That'd be kind of sick. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Or you get raptured, and I'm just here. I'm like, oh my god, what did I do? You guys will never believe it. So, <laughs> oh, you wild. You ran out of more space on the camera. It didn't record. Yeah. Oof. Oof. <laughs> ah, so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's a, a good representation of life as well. Like that during these you know, waiting periods, why am I? We, we talked about in the last podcast, and really the one before that about going into the new year. We end in family matters. Going into the new year, what can we do preemptively so we can get a start on our goals? So not just waiting until January first. You know, taking these action steps now to try to prepare ourselves for. The, our fitness goals, you know, get, maybe knocking off the dust, trying to get to the gym, try to build these healthy habits now. So that way, when they're in place, we can just start rocking and rolling. Yeah. And when they're in place, you have momentum. Exactly. Right. And you can start building towards that. And I think a few tips, tools, and tactics for that is to simply journal. You talk about gratitude. Can you talk about that? Yeah. I mean, so at this point, it'll be last week. But today, I'm making a post about how I just finished my first gratitude journal. So j- literally today... How many pages is in that? Oh, dude, I think it was... I, I filled it out one page a day over the course of the last, like, four and a half months. Oh, wow. So it was, you know, over 100 pages. I, my new one's coming in the mail today, so I'm excited about that. Awesome. But uh, if you guys want to, my, on my Instagram, Pretty Fly for DY Guy, I put on my caption about how I'm inviting more people to do the journal with me. And I would love to see what other people are grateful for, what other people are doing. The, the link to it's in my bio, or you can do, use your own gratitude journal. I'll throw it in the link below this YouTube video, too. There we go. Yeah, perfect. It, it's literally called the 5-Minute Gratitude Journal, and it's helped me tremendously. So for me, dude, honestly, I'll say like the last year and a half has been filled with a lot of challenges, but particularly the last six months. So, And since I've been here, it's been like a godsend for me. And being in a, a very positive community that's trying to help me grow and help me try to develop uh, the skill sets to be able to make sure I can handle these challenges while still helping other people and still showing up every day to be my best self. And that's one thing that gratitude journaling has really done for me, has been able to keep me grounded, be able to remember that no matter how many challenges are going on, no matter what is not perfect in my life, there are a lot of really good things. I'm healthy. I have... You know, I have my truck. I have people that I work with every single day that are absolutely phenomenal. I have a job I really care about. I have opportunities to grow. And every day I get the, the opportunity to impact somebody that maybe I, I, I don't even see. You know, someone who's just going on their health and fitness journey and I get to try to make their life a little bit better. And I, I cannot think of a better way to start living your life. You know, as a 25 year old man who obviously I'm seeking other things. I want to continue to grow. I don't want to just stay where I'm at. I want to continue to make a bigger impact. And one day I want to be able to lead a family. I want to be able to have a a beautiful wife and uh, strong kids who can make the world an even better place. Mm -hmm. I was actually talking the other day about, you know, Andy's dad, Andy and Sal's dad works here at Big Jim. I love Jim. Great guy. And I was, I think I was talking to Alex, like our, one of our coworkers about how proud does that guy have to be? Because to me, when I'm a dad, my biggest goal has to be that I want my kids to do better than me, mm-hmm. no matter what that looks like. And when y- your kids are all of a sudden literally changing the world, like, and I get to be a part of that every single day. I get to be a part of that. That's you know something that's pretty magic. But, but Jim is straight up cool. Yeah, and he still works exactly. here every yeah. single day. Hey, I mean, he he still does paperwork. I see him. He's reading over documents. <laughs> He's taking care of Sal's dog, Gary. What a fucking life, huh, dude? That's Good what I'm saying. Good lord, everybody loves Gary. And, but good. like, he's be, he gets to see his kids work every single day. Not only that, work together every single day, and he gets to still be a part of it. And he's going to do that till the day he dies. You want to talk about goals? That's it. I think I think I should on my vision board. I should just put a picture of Big Jim. Dude, I'm, I might do the same. Honestly. I, you know, because I mean, that's for me right now on my vision board, I have a picture of what's going to be my wedding. It's literally, I <laughs> took a picture of a stock wedding photo of the guy dipping his wife and I just colored over the lady's face. Yeah. 
And then I put, like, my beautiful wife. And then I put a picture of me over the dude. <laughs> just me. So hey, guys, like, this is me. Yeah, and then I have, like, uh, my fam, like, what I'm envisioning my family is going to look like. All of these things. Because that's something that's really important to me. Yeah. Um, especially coming from, I don't want to say that I have, like, the worst family dynamics in the world. But I've definitely seen some things that, and I'm sure you can agree, of things that I don't want to do as a parent. And but I, I, think that, some, I, th- I think that's part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I saw a lot of really good, too. Exactly. So. And, and I think people forget to talk about that. It's like, yes, I've seen things from my parents that I don't ever want to do. But there's a lot of things from my parents and grandparents that I hope are in my family and that I'm going to foster within my family and looking for a partner that will do that with me. Like, I have seen bad, seen good, just like you. Seen bad, seen good. Realized what I don't want, realize what I do want. And I think that's the important part as two young single males that like, hey, that's kind of what we're looking for. Mm. And, and that's part of finding a proper partner eventually. Yeah, and that's the thing. That, and I think culture today has kind of forgotten about that. And partner selection is huge, dude. Yeah. Uh, and I, I know I'm a young dude, like so yeah, I've never been married. But I've, I've dated some people that obviously were not the person for me. Uh, I think ah, I've dated some people that college life. Yeah, dude, well, college life and then military post, life, post grad. Yeah, military <laughs> life. It is what it is. But I learned a lot from those experiences. Mm-hmm. Learned a lot about you know how I can prepare myself for my future wife now, mm-hmm. and try to make sure that I can be the best husband possible. One thing that I I have the expectation of it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to oh. be a good husband, to be a good father. Not. Excuse me, not good. Good's not good enough. I'm going to be a great husband and a great father. But at the same time, I know it's going to be a challenge being my wife only because I know, like, the expectations I'm going to have mm-hmm. for her. I want her to be somebody who's going to be trying to chase Christ with me. I want her to be somebody who's going to be willing to nurture my children, to be very selfless in that act. And I'm very traditional in the sense of uh, your, your wife should... Um, you know, submit to you and you should love and cherish your wife. So I want to make sure that I can do everything I possibly can to provide for my family. Ultimately, ultimate goal is my wife won't have to work. If my wife can take care of our home, take care of our family and just build that, I think that's a really beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm more than happy to do whatever it takes to make sure that can happen. So that way she can, you know, live that life. And I I think the woman that I marry is going, who's on par with my views and on par with my values is going to want that pretty heavily i'm sure that you know there's going to be times when she might want to work and that's okay with me too i just want to make sure during those formative years we have that option we have that opportunity for her to be there because i think a lot of, a lot of women crave that they want to be with their kids like who 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 goes and you know has a baby and thinks right after you have this baby oh now i'm just going to put it in daycare the people that don't want to have the baby what I'm saying. It's and sad. it's so unfortunate nowadays that culture... Some people don't have a choice. Some people have to make that decision. Yes. And, and um, culture today has kind of like glorified the the hookup generation and things like that. And like every single woman that I'm with from now on, I can see myself being with. Like no matter what. Even if we don't work out as partners, we are going to stay in each other's lives because of our child. And, and that's how I now view how I'm looking at women. Is just like, okay, cool. Can I see myself being a partner with you, right? So then, if we do happen to be, have the blessing of a child, even if things go wrong, are we aligned in the same way that we are going to stay civil? We are going to still be a part of these child's lives, um, and you are going to want to nurture my child and I'm going to want to give my best even if we are no longer together to you and our child that's how I look at relationships now um and that comes with growing up right and I mean I 20 year old Sully wasn't thinking this way fuck you was 20 20 20 year old Derek yeah And, and but that's part of growing up and that's part of realizing and creating a code of conduct in my own life and I got that over years of messing up. I got that over seeking higher value mentors, right? We look at Andy and Emily 
And it's just like, holy Christ, like they are a private couple, but from what we're able to see from the outside, I mean, just go listen to the 75 hard podcast with Andy and Emily. Like we're seeing how they work together to create a better life is just something that I want. And it seems like every high performing couple, like they have problems too. Problems are going to get everybody, but they're able to take a step back have conversations, they are aligned in their values, and they went into a marriage knowing that they are aligned in a value in their values so that it's a, a partnership. And yeah, sometimes one partner is going to be the face of the family. Sometimes the other partner is going to be the face of the family. And that dynamic is established ahead of time and talked through before jumping into anything that gets remotely kind of serious and down the line. Yeah, I think that's really important in your relationships, Mm -hmm. no matter who it's with, whether it be a significant other or a friendship, establishing those roles in that relationship and constantly communicating. (laughs) We we like to say having these hard conversations, really they should just be considered conversations. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what I need, this is what you need, this is how this is going to work. Yep. You know, I can't... I, I remember, I read this book... Um, it was called Love Unfucked. Really good book, but it, a lot of it talks about how your partners are not responsible for your happiness. Mm-hmm. You are responsible for yours and trying to, if you want to, pouring into your partner. If you don't do that, it's probably not going to work out and they're probably not going to want to pour into you. But I agree with a lot of the things that I read in that book. However, I do think that there needs to be a lot of giving in relationships. And not the the thing that I think it hammers home on is that when you do do those things, you do those go that extra mile, that extra step. You it needs to be truly a gift, not expecting anything in return from it. And if you are not getting what you need out of your relationship, another great book is uh, the Five Love Languages. Love I just, that book. I just reread that one. Should be required reading. I agree from just about any company in the world because it it develops not only your significant other relationship with your significant other, but also your personal relationships. <laughs> yeah outstanding book that teaches you hey this is how because if you meet somebody that you fall in love with and your love languages aren't in line and you don't know how to express you know appreciation to them teaches you how to do that and how to communicate that with them so that way you can think like okay i'm not a gift giver that's not my love language but it is for my wife and that doesn't have to be a car or a ring or anything like that. A lot of times it's flowers from a coffee shop or that cup of coffee. Or I left you a card this morning. Yep. Or I did this, that, and the third. So those are just just some small takes, but. Well, that's relationship talk from guys with eyes who are currently single. So. (laughs) Weights make me happy. We're We're still young. We still got time. Yes. Yes. We can shoot till we're dead. Yeah. yeah. If there's any 25 year old Catholic women out there, it's my age or around that age. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding God's going to put the right woman in my life at the right time So I have. but if you are a 25 year old and Catholic woman he is uh, yeah. <laughs> please, no, I'm, for like, for no, I'm just kidding that God. was a joke don't actually do that please at Instagram yeah. <laughs> MDMs yeah, oh, always open um, no so, so like, if my future wife is watching this that didn't just happen so, okay, that, so we went from gratitude um and then we kind of talked about Big Jim and how he's goals, right? Mm. Um, the thing that stuck out for me, especially in this Christmas time, right? Gratitude, starting again, is how to do that. And we've covered it a little bit. But I think one of the big things that Big Jim makes it so simple. And Andy, this is how he built his company. Sal, before or after baseball, he was in sales. And then he came to first form. This is how he's kind of built his career is make a list, call a list, go now. Right? Have you ever heard that? That like those three phrase like words or like like that phrase together. Have you yeah, heard it? I have heard that. Yeah. So what Big Jim basically talks about, uh, he was in sales, right? And it's make a list of people you have to call or contact. Call the freaking list. Go now. Because you don't want to waste time. What is the one thing that you never get back? Time. Exactly. And those sands of time are ticking no matter who you are, where you are, what you are. Like, they are going away. And the unfortunate part, but also the blessing of life, is you don't know when that's going to end. 
Uh, I, and I truly believe that. So, because <clears throat> it gives you a reminder that you have to take advantage of the time that you do have. When you are blessed to open those eyes again, you have to make a list, call a list, go now. What do you think on that? Yeah, I, I would 100% agree because you know, even now, people, not just even now, uh, I, I we tend to see that people not procrastinate just about everything. How much, you know, whether it be doom trend, scrolling, doom scrolling, watching movies all the time, everything that I've done. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love watching a movie. I love doing this, and that a lot of that is unwinding. That is kind of allowing yourself that time to kind of fill your cup up. At How, times. At times. However, if all you're doing is showing up to work 40 hours a week, or maybe it's a little bit more than that, bro, that's not that much. That's not that much. I had, the, I, I had a talk, I had a, one of these hard combos with one of my friends who actually is the lady who cuts my hair about, hey, we're trying, trying to increase our amount of activity we're getting in in the day. Uh and say, hey, let's just try to do add in some squats at you know certain points in the day, you know, or whenever, like to start the day. Mm-hmm. And we had this discussion about, hey, uh, I just need this extra energy that I have right now to make sure I can get through my shift or to get through work because I'm on my feet all day. And I get that. That's a very logical way to think for most people who are on their feet and they don't really have a great understanding of how physical fitness can benefit themselves. However, you know, we're on our feet all day and even during black friday when we were working you know extended hours really trying to make sure that we were making an impact really trying to make sure we were getting the mission done we were still you know in the gym we were still posting on our social media we were still filming our podcast we were still doing all of these things to try to make sure that we could help make a difference and then also take care of ourselves even if it's in, you know an hour in the gym even if it's you know trying to make sure we're meal prepping those steps are really important. And, you know, we had this discussion about, hey, it, it takes five minutes to do 10 squats every minute for five minutes. And that's 50 squats. And that's more than we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you know, that's a good point. And if it will give me more energy throughout the day, then I'll give it a shot. So not procrastinate. Because before she was like, I'm going to wait until after the Christmas season's over. And then I'll Of course. Yeah, you're going to wait till the holidays. Yeah. Which are, is are over when you can be building – Momentum exactly. and those habits right now. Exactly. But and society even, has tricked us. And even if you fail, even if you fail right now, tomorrow's a new day. Or even, not even tomorrow, that next hour is a new hour. Yep. So just some things to think about with that. And, you know, I, I wholeheartedly agree that we shouldn't be wasting this time. Mm-hmm. We should try to be as efficient with our time as we possibly can in all aspects of our life. And that's really what's going to manage our relationships better. It's going to manage our work-life balance better. Really, I, I'm not a big fan of like the term work-life balance. It's just life. It's just you just kind of got to go do things. Guess what, y'all? Work is part of life. <laughs> like, like Hopefully, not, you love your job. Yeah, but even if you don't, like sometimes it's just got to get done. And, and the thing is, is, like people don't realize that, like, man, I don't want to work. Yeah, but what else are you gonna do? Because you can only sit on the beach and drink mai tais for so freaking long before you get bored, and then you're gonna have to find something to do. Now, if you're blessed to have that financial situation to where you can afford to sit on the beach and have Mai Tais, then you can go to do something that you are truly 100% passionate about, and it doesn't necessarily monetize right away. But if you are in a situation to where, like, hey, you kind of need to work, right? and hopefully it is within your passion, and here's the thing, it might not be within your passion to start. Like, it's uncomfortable to start. It is. It is it's, very it's, it's uncomfortable to start, but entry level positions aren't normally like the glorified. This is what I want to do with the rest of my life. But once you get through those and you start leveling up, that company that you might have been like, "Oh my god, this isn't what I thought it was," turns out to be exactly what you thought it was. You were just in an entry level position. The the Bible kind of refers to this as doing ashes work. Mm-hmm. And as a young Christian man, like the the time of your life to do like your ashes work. Is usually like your your mid like early mid twenties into your early thirties. It's that time where you're kind of supposed to grind it out, struggle a little bit more, work really hard, so that way by the time you're in your mid to late thirties, you're in your forties, you're a much stronger, wiser man. You're ready to lead your family. You've built you know, especially at that time when maybe your kids are getting into like their early teen years, or maybe they're still young kids. It doesn't you know whatever or 
at work, you can be a much bigger leader or in the church, you can be a much bigger leader. And you have to almost accept in that time span, there's going to be a time in your life when you're going to have to do some stuff you don't want to do, but that's, what's going to lead you to grow. You can't just come out of very few people come out of college making big money or come out of high school making big money. That is a, that's even more of a rarity. So kind of putting that into perspective of, you know, especially if you want to chase what you're actually passionate about, like I know I could have gone in and probably done like medical sales and done very well and probably made a lot of money coming out. However, would I have wanted to do that or would I have wanted to do something that I could have made a much bigger impact in, in an industry I'm really passionate about and try to help more people? I'm going to take that every single time and then just do the, the challenging stuff and continue to do the challenging stuff until, you know, one day the mission's accomplished and then we find a new mission. Yeah, that hard work is going to pay off. Will Smith has an awesome story. I don't know if you've ever heard him tell it. It's about him building a wall. You ever heard it? I have not. Oh, my God. You live under a rock? Hit me with it. I'm not a huge Will Smith guy in a lot of I understand that, and, and I get it. Um, we can talk but, about that but he, time. but he talks – we will. But he talks about um, him and his brother had to build a wall for his dad, right? And he talks about how, like, we can't do this. Like, we have to build a whole freaking wall, right? And then they started, and he hated every second of it. But they started building it, and it was bad. Knocked it down. They had to knock it down. And then they started building it again. And Will, something flipped in his mind. He's like, I'm going to lay this brick as perfectly as this brick can be laid. Right? He's not a wall builder. He does, he's not a bricklayer. However, he took one brick at a time. And he laid it as perfectly as it can be laid. And it took him a whole summer. right? Him and his brother working on this freaking wall. But eventually, even though it seemed impossible that they could do this, they had this beautiful wall. And it's because he took the responsibility to control the controllables and lay each and every brick as perfectly as a brick can be laid for his ability at that time and before he knew it he had a wall that's what life is right it's just like yeah man like sometimes your wall is going to have to get knocked down and then if you decide to have gratitude to make a list to call the list to go now and to be determined to do it to the best of your ability you are going to get better over time and then before you know it you have the career, you have the family, and you have the life that you've always wanted. It's just going to take a little time. Yeah. It's, so it sounds to me, big moral of that also is taking it one step at a time. Exactly. And being deliberate with that step. Small, deliberate actions on a daily basis is how you get the life that you've always wanted. That's really cool. That is a really good story. I like that a lot. I'll send you the link. He tells it. You know, he, he can be a fun boy. He's an actor and stuff. So like, he plays it up, but it, he, he tells it in an absolutely amazing story. So really I'll cool. send it to you. You'll like it. That's really cool. So let's talk for a second, Sully, if you don't mind. You're, you have a pretty fun trip planned. I get to drive today. There we go. To go home to Wisconsin. Actually, not today. Sorry. You're seeing this. I'm already in Wisconsin when you guys see this. You're enjoying some family. You're enjoying some apple crisp. Apple crisp and chili. I'm having chili today with my grandma. We're, we're taking it over there to, to her home. And yeah. I love that. So yes. what, are, what are you doing today, with it being Christmas, mm -hmm. at the time of this podcast? What's your plans for kind of staying on track for today? Brother, we're running the game plan. Running the game plan. And when I say running the game plan, um, if you haven't been to my Instagram yet, I guarantee you I did a walk and talk. And you know what? Because I'm home, my mom's probably with me. That's, pretty, that's, that's awesome. Dude, I know. But... And, and that's what I get to enjoy while I'm home because I'm not home. This is the first time since 2012 that I've been home for Christmas. So I'm super excited. But I'm still getting my reading done. I'm still doing my goal setting. I'm still knocking out every single task that I require of myself that I've set into my life that will set me up for success. So I'm being selfish before I can be selfless. And I think that's a, a big thing that people miss out on. Um, running the game plan, guys, it's the game plan. That's what we do. Like, you can choose not to run it, but then you're going to lose another day. 
And we already talked about the importance of taking advantage of however much time we have on this planet. Lean into that a little bit more for me. What, how does being selfish kind of lead into you being more selfless? Mm-hmm. So if I don't get better, I can't help people get better. If I don't become a better coach, if I don't learn more about our products here at First Form, if I don't learn how to become a better man for my future partner, for my future family, how can I ever expect that to come into my life? Or how can I ever expect to change somebody else's life? Right? So in order to be selfless, I must be selfish by filling my cup and then being able to give to others. Mm, Does that make sense? Yeah. You can't pour from an empty cup. No. I've tried. It doesn't work. And you taking the time for yourself to develop yourself is going to make you, although it maybe takes you away for an hour to two hours out of the day, Mm -hmm. it's going to make you much more present and much more efficient for the other 22, 23 hours out of the day. See, but here's the thing is that I get up early every single day. I've done, I've done, man, you can look back on my Instagram because I don't delete anything on purpose. So like you can see over the 3000 posts on my Instagram, there's days where I was in Washington state at two 30 being like, let's get this bread. When I was a kid, (laughs) like dude, it's two 30. And I was like, leg day, let's go. And 24 hour fitness. And I've been doing this for a long time. But I get up before anybody. This is something from Dr. Eric Thomas, um, ET, the hip hop preacher on Instagram. He like he changed my life. I saw him live in 2014 or 2015 down in Scottsdale, Scottsdale, Arizona. And he was he's just like man, like the world is asleep at three o'clock in the morning. That is the best time he used to get up and walk and pray. So like that's what I started. I got up and I would go for my walks. Now it's turned into walking talks. But I used to get up, man, and I'd turn on. I would turn on Les Brown speaking at, uh, used to be the Georgia Dome. It's like from 1996, and I just let that sucker play. Or I'd turn on Tony Robbins, or I'd, this is where I'd turn on Andy. This is where I would turn on, you know, Lewis Howes, Tim Ferriss, all these people that are successful. And I, was just, I just wanted it in my mind because the world was still. And that's what I do today yet. I still listen to podcasts. Now it's Tom Bilyeu. Now it's State, Andy Real AF instead of MFCEO Project. Um, it's still Lewis House. It's Dr. Sean Stevenson. It's these things that I want in my life and that will help me get better so then I can fill my cup before anybody else is awake. And then I can create value throughout the rest of the day. So I'm actually not taking away from my family. That's how I've designed it. You can get up later and stay up later. That's perfectly fine. But I've designed it so I can knock out all my critical tasks. I am over 10,000 steps today because I do have to travel. And I knocked out my critical tasks. We're doing a podcast because I got my steps in. And you got your workout in because I prioritized that. right? But it didn't affect this. It's not going to affect my work day. It's not going to affect me giving my mom a hug tonight because I still have to go exercise. Because I already did it. Get my stuff done in the morning, in the morning because the world is quiet. That's when I can focus. That's how I do it. Yeah, that's good. I like that a lot. Well, and, you know, with it being Christmas, mm-hmm. kids are up early. They are. Kids want to open up their presents, all that jazz. Been there. Makes sense. I, I was the same way as a kid. They wanted, You wanted to jump on your parents' bed to be like, wake up, we got to Santa's came. And they were probably up a little later trying to put up, put stuff out, but, you know, or whatever. Somebody had to eat the cookies. Somebody had to take those bites out of the cookies. Maybe, you know, just a little, little holiday treat. Hopefully you can track that in your macros. Put it in a little first format. If you don't, it's okay. It's okay. Anyway. Um, but for those people too, you know, it's I would still say, hey, still get up and either knock those tasks out. Maybe if it's just one or two. You could be like, hey, I'm knocking my reading out right before the kids get up. I know it's a little pain in the butt, but my kids are going to be distracted later playing with all their toys. So I can maybe relax for a little bit, take a little nap. Just unwind. Because it's not like it's going to be a super active day. It's Christmas. You're going on the walk and talk with your mom. Mm-hmm. You're you know, taking her out to get your activity in, but still being present with her. I remember as a kid getting rollerblades one year. And we all went out and we went on a little family walk and I rollerbladed around and yep. had a good time on it. I think my little sister got a bike and she was biking around. Great way to get your family outside, getting some activity in, still having them be present with them, but you're getting some activity in. So yep. it's, it doesn't have to be, I woke up, man. At three, 2 o'clock at in, two the morning. in the morning. It may be Because is. I know my kids are getting up at 5. No, 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 no. Maybe it's getting your... Because we, we don't have a family. But maybe if you do have a family, it's getting some family bonding time. 
and enjoying those gifts out and doing whatever. You know, it, it could be as simple as that, going for a walk. It could be as simple as letting the kids rollerblade around. It could be as simple as letting somebody bike around. Go to a park. Like, things like that to where, like, you're still prioritizing your health and secretly you're setting the standard for your kids in, in the future. Maybe you read to your kids. Maybe That's something, you, too. Maybe you do these things that – and, like, you know, I, so I was watching the – in the app, the live stream about transforming as a parent and Sal brought up a really good point about how he talks to his kids like they're adults to try to help make sure that they become mature young men. Give your kids those challenging concepts, even on Christmas and, you know, show them maybe like, Hey, these are the things that dad is reading to try to make him a better man, to try to make him better for you guys. And kids love that stuff. I remember like my dad used to do that when I was a little kid. Now it was more for like Harry Potter books, but I just wanted to be with my dad. It's and cool. and it, like even Harry Potter has a beautiful thing of creating an imagination, right? And and pushing back against you know the the hierarchy and the things that you say are wrong and right. The evils in the, the world. The evils in the world. And and getting into a little bit of mischief. That's okay too, right? Um, for me, my mom used to read me. It, it was a Bible, right? But it had a, it was like in story form. And, and uh, she would read me a page out of the Bible. There'd be some cool pictures, and we'd keep going. And like that's what we used to do at night. Like that's that was our time together. That's really cool. Yeah, and I like that one a lot. Hashtag core memory. That's a, good, that's, that's a really good one. I would yeah. strongly encourage people to do that. Yeah. So like, especially when you have a family, like you are, I would say do as much as possible with your family, um, especially around these holidays, because we all tend to get together. Um. And, you know, it, this is a time to bring that love into your life as much as possible, um, to create those memories that will last forever. And honestly, like, kind of get off your phone a little bit. Um, don't doom scroll. Enjoy as much family time as you can because, you know, you might never know when this is the last Christmas that you'll have with them. And I know that sounds a little bit morbid, but guess what? We all die. So it, it, that's just the way it is. And that's how how I view it now. Um, being away from my family for so long, like like I said, this is my first Christmas home since 2012, that I am going to enjoy this one so much. Not for the food, even though the food is going to be delicious. Mom, you can still make apple crisp. Um, You're encouraged to make apple crisp, Mom. Very encouraged. <laughs> um, but more just for seeing my, my grandmas, seeing my dad, seeing my mother, seeing my cousins, things like that. Pastor Mark. Pastor Mark. Ooh, I can't wait. Um, and just enjoying it, but still filling my own cup. And that family does fill my, help fill my cup. Don't get me wrong. Um, but doing what I'm staying on track, doing what I do, and getting the job done. And we make a list, call a list, go now. I like it. Yeah. What do you got going this weekend or the for the holidays? You know, we're going to find that out. We're going to find that out as it comes a little closer. Well, the invite's always open. Well, well, I appreciate it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make the trip to Wisconsin. Because I'll be at work on Tuesday, but you know, which is, you know, I'm excited about of it. Of course. It'll be good because I like to be in that routine. Yep. And be able to be able to help more people as soon as possible. So that'll be cool. But we'll see. You know, I'll probably get, like, I'll definitely go to Mass on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. Um, my friend Rebecca is doing something at her house and said that she's having a lot of people over and said I could join if I wanted to. Uh, so that'll be fun. But I think my big things are going to be, like you said, running the game plan, trying to get my movement in. Sorry, that was rude. I had an alarm going. Um, running the game plan, get my movement in, get my protein in, You know, making sure I enjoy you know, my favorite Christmas foods, like the, the cookies and things of that nature, but not taking it to an 11 not going way overboard to a point where I'm going to feel sick. Mm-hmm. Just kind of enjoying that day. Yep. You know, I I'm, I'm just want to make sure that I can be present with wherever I am at. Uh, and then also, you know, remembering that it is still a day f- to celebrate Christ, to celebrate Christ is coming. And at the end of the day, like one thing that we can all, well, I hope we can all agree on one day, is that Christ is king. And that, that's what I want to make sure I'm remembering throughout the day is that, you know, Christ came for me specifically came for you specifically like every this is i mean this is more into the easter season when i think about this but when right before christ died when christ is in the garden he, he sees every sin 
committed by mankind. He saw everything horrible that I've done in my life or will do in my life. Not that I've done like atrocious things, but things that are sins. He saw everything that every one of us has done wrong. And he still said, yes. And then on the cross, thought of me by name, which is, you know, a beautiful thought. But like, yes, I am doing this for Derek. Yes, I am doing this for Soli. Yes, I'm doing this for everyone who's watching. And that's something I'm going to think about is that you know, he came for this, for me. And that's, that's one thing, I'm, another thing I'm really grateful of is no matter what is going to go, like transpire in the next few days, it could be you know, the be- next best few days of my life. It could be the worst next few days of my life. But at the end of the day, that's something to celebrate. Absolutely love it. And I'm glad you have that. I'm glad you opened your eyes. Yeah, I got to say how thankful I am for you. Because as we've gotten to know each other over these past few months, like it's been some of the greatest times of my life. Um, great connection, more than what I've had in a long time. And that might be that we're veterans, but or we're just kind of meatheads into the same thing. A little bit of both. A little bit of both. A little bit of both. Um, which definitely helped. And I can't... It's very difficult for me to put into words how much it means to me to have the blessing that you're here and that everybody else is watching. Um, so I, I just have to say from the bottom of my heart, like, thank you for everything you do, not only for me, but for the, for the fam, for the community, and for spreading the word of Christ. Um, it's a breath of fresh air in today's world, and I think it has to be recognized. And I'm just going to end my Christmas Day podcast by saying thank you. Thank you. You guys are all awesome. And this is just setting us up for an amazing 2024. And we are going to do it driven through Christ and providing value to as many people as possible in a legal, ethical, and moral way. Yeah, I and agree. I'm, I'm so excited for it. I am too. I am too. You know, and I, I'm really thankful that you, you know, are allowing me to be a part of this. I think this is going to be a really incredible thing where we can help a lot of people. I'm really thankful for our friendship too. Not only since I've been here, but since before I came here, when we first kind of connected over Instagram. And you've done a lot for me to try to help push me to be a better version of myself and try to really make sure I'm hitting as many, you know, critical tasks as I can to help more people and to try to help these people. And it's been a really incredible thing. So I'm really thankful for you. I'm really thankful that I've been able to welcome you and you've been able to welcome me into both of our communities, both of our families. I think that's a really cool thing. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm so blessed with my life. And I, I'm very thankful that you've been a part of that because you've been a big part of that. Um, so Merry Christmas, Sully. Merry Christmas to everyone who's watching. Christ is King. Let's have a great day today. Let's make it a great day. Appreciate you.